Thank you. Good afternoon. So we're reporting for three reporting periods today. From Friday to Saturday, uh, we had 137 people diagnosed with COVID-19. Between Saturday and Sunday, there was an additional 110, or uh, well, sorry, 119 uh, cases. And from Sunday to today, we had an additional 61 people diagnosed, bringing uh, the total for the weekend to 317 new cases, including four who were epidemiologically linked. Our total in British Columbia now stands at 7,279 people with COVID-19. And that includes 2,557 in the Vancouver coastal area, 3,754 people in the Fraser Health Region, 195 people on the Vancouver Island Health Region, 473 people in the Interior Health Region, 216 now in the Northern Health Region, and 84 people who reside outside of Canada. We now have, are up to 1,594 active cases in British Columbia in all health authorities, of whom 58 now are in hospital, 16 of whom are in critical care or ICU. Sadly, this past weekend, we've had six additional people die from COVID-19, bringing the total to 219 people. And again, five of the six people were elders in our long-term care system four in the Fraser Health Region, and one person in Vancouver Coastal Health, and we've had our first tragic death in the Northern Health area. Once again, our thoughts and our condolences go to the families, to the communities, the people who care for these loved ones who they've lost under these most difficult conditions. We now have 3,047 people who are under active public health monitoring and 5,446 people who have covered, recovered. We have no new health care outbreaks and in a bit of good news we have four that are now declared over. The second outbreak at Holy Family Hospital is now declared over in the Vancouver Coastal Health Region and there are three in the Fraser Health Region. The second outbreak that was uh, detected at MSA Manor, uh, one at the, the Sorney Alzheimer Center and at the George Derby Center are also all over now, leaving us with 13 active outbreaks in the health care system um, and a total of 791 um, um, people affected, including 471 residents and 320 staff. Uh, we have no new community outbreaks and the cluster that was associated with the Okanagan Correctional Facility has also been resolved and is now over. But there continues to be community exposure events that have happened in areas around the province. And I encourage people to continue to check health authority websites and the BCCDC website regularly. So COVID-19 has not left us and it has required all of us to adjust our daily activities to, sure, to ensure that we're doing what we need to do to keep those we are closest to and our communities safe. We must now all hold steady with our layers of protection and get ready for what we know lies ahead. We have to do our part and be ready for unexpected challenges like we are seeing right now with the wildfire smoke here and that's impacting our communities across the province. I know how many people have questions about how to best protect themselves and their families when their air quality is compromised. And I want to encourage everybody, again, the information and resources about our wildfire smoke and your health is available on the BCCDC website. And we know that, uh, that there are important considerations, particularly for people who have underlying lung, lung disease or asthma heart disease and diabetes. And we know that the mixture that we inhale with wildfire smoke has a number of particulates in it that cause irritation to the nose, to the throat and to the lungs, and particularly um, affects people who are very young and our elders. And we know that they are the same people who can be most adversely affected from COVID-19. We know as well that pregnant women can be very affected um, by wildfire smoke. So those are the things we need to be concerned about right now. Outdoor act exercise should be avoided right now until the sky's clear. 
As well, we know that mask wearing can help if it's tight fitting, can help as well in reducing the amount of inhaled particulates that we um, bring into our lungs. So that is something that people should be doing when they're outside right now. We know for some people there's a lot of, well for many of us, there's confusion about um, what is the symptoms caused by the, the smoky skies and what are the symptoms caused by COVID-19 and that is of course very concerning for us in our schools as well as other places. And we know that schools can be a very safe place for people and for children and all adults in the school system. It's a place where you can be protected from both COVID-19 and from the smoky skies. We need to go back to our basics, making sure that we are screening out and if we have concerns about symptoms, to stay away from school. To make sure that we have our distancing, our hand cleaning, that we close windows in these conditions and that we use, if they're available, the HVAC systems or in-classroom HEPA filters that some places have. We know that masks are helpful as well for both situations. We want to avoid strenuous exercise outside and limit our indoor exercise as well to low intensity. And for people who do have asthma or other chronic heart disease or chronic lung conditions, to make sure that you have your medications with you and if you use them, to make sure you carry your rescue medications with you as well. And for anybody who is having difficulty breathing, make sure that you can call 911 to get assistance if you need it. It is also challenging to know if some of these symptoms that we have from COVID are related to the air quality or vice versa. And just to, to as a, a challenge, things like dry cough and runny eyes and, and irritation, those can be associated both with smoke and with COVID. But there are things that are not as likely to be caused by wildfire smoke. So anything like fever and chills and the aches and and uh, the productive cough and things like that that we get with COVID. So that's one of the things that you can use to, to uh, tell the difference. And we have seen wildfire smoke before. It has been a couple of years, but we know some, some of us, many of us know how we react to this smoke. So if it is your usual symptoms from smoke, you can uh, make sure that you take the, the actions you need to protect yourself. This is the time for back to school back to work, back to doing all we can to flatten our COVID-19 curve again. The number of new cases is, as you can imagine, placing a heavy strain on our public health teams and is a concern for me and I know for many of us. We can help our public health teams by doing our part with the choices that we make every day. The symptoms of COVID-19 can be very mild, particularly in young healthy people. You may think it's seasonal allergies, a mild cold, or now perhaps irritation from the wildfire smoke. But if you have concerns or doubts, stay away from others, get a test. We have seen that people can easily and inadvertently spread this virus to people they are closest to. And we've seen this in some of the recent workplaces and community exposures. And uh, tragically, we have seen it when we've had celebrations, whether they're celebrations of life whether it's the coming together that we need to have to celebrate people for funerals, for marriages and other just getting together because we need that social interaction. We need to go back to our basics now. We need to find ways to celebrate and to include those who may be most vulnerable to COVID-19 but include them in ways that are safe. We need to do this to protect our elders and our seniors. Physically distance and social connection are the terms that we need to remember and go back to. Now is also our time to make sure that that social connection is there. It is important for our mental and emotional well-being, but we need to stick to small groups. And that means is stick to six, keep our groups small, and spend time with the people we know. We need to set these routines now so that we can carry ourselves through whatever comes up in the coming weeks and months. We know what we need to do. Now is the time to do it. We need to hold our line and stand strong against COVID-19. And we also more than ever need to remember to be kind to each other, to be calm and to stay safe.
Thank you very much, Dr. Henry. And uh, I wanted to join uh, Dr. Henry and uh, obviously on behalf of the Premier as well, the government, really the people of BC to pass on uh, my condolences to the families of the six people who passed away from COVID-19 in British Columbia this weekend. Five of them in long-term care in Metro Vancouver and the first person to pass away in the Northern Health Authority. These are very difficult times. I think Dr. Henry was talking about this, the challenge of grieving, of coming together uh, in celebrations of life at this time of COVID-19. So we want to, all of their families, all of the caregivers to know uh, how much we're thinking about them and how much we grieve with them on their terrible loss this weekend. Uh, as uh, Dr. Henry has noted, uh, we had uh, five uh, healthcare outbreaks, four in, uh, in the healthcare system and one outside in the community that were declared over this weekend. I just wanted to uh, note and uh, in the case of George Derby and MSA Manor and Holy Family and the Cerny Alzheimer's Center and obviously the Okanagan Correction Center, uh, we know uh, the stress that the declaration of an outbreak, even an outbreak of one person or a staff person from outside, how much anxiety that creates and people who live uh, in, uh, in long-term care homes in particular and their families and the staff. So it's uh, truly good news after a very challenging period in those five cases to see those outbreaks declared over. There are uh, 58 people hospitalized uh, in, uh, from COVID-19 in BC and that's 28 in Fraser Health, 22 in Vancouver Coastal Health one person outside of Canada in Vancouver Coastal Health and seven in the Northern Health Authority. Uh, and I just note as well the ongoing and extraordinary work of, of public health uh, during this pandemic. Um, this past weekend over the three days, public health, health con conducted 17,125 tests in, in BC and we know that there were 317 of those 17,125 or 1.85 percent that uh, were found to be positive, but also 1,594 people who are active cases who are being supported by public health and 3,047 people under public health monitoring. And so uh, we appreciate the extraordinary effort uh, in all health authorities by uh, by public health, by uh, people from Vancouver Coastal and Fraser Health from Vancouver Island and Interior, the North and the First Nations Health Authority in supporting people who are, um, who are dealing with COVID-19 in BC. Uh, every Monday uh, we provide uh, an update on uh, PPE and so uh, as with previous weeks I'll report uh, on how much PPE has arrived cumulatively since the end of March and then specifically what has arrived over the past week. To recap our cumulative totals from March to last week's report on Tuesday, September 8th, the following PPE has arrived in BC. Just over 6,300,095 are equivalent respirators, just over 52 million surgical or procedure gloves, just over 2,600,000 pieces of eye protection, including goggles and face shields, just over 115 million pairs of gloves, and just over 8,700,000 gowns. Many of the items I've just listed and other equipment that has recently arrived during our testing process to make sure product meets or exceeds safety requirements before being used in BC's healthcare system. Today I can tell you that over the past week, since my last update on Tuesday, September 8th, up until yesterday, we've received the following 91,766 N95 or equivalent respirators, 1,993,300 surgical or procedure masks. 97,850 pairs of gloves and 603,940 gowns. We'll continue to source and test our PPE and are working to pursue any and all credible leads for safe and effective product in our healthcare system. In wrapping up today, I think uh, that between the changes we've made in our lives for COVID-19 and the smoke from the US fires, many of us may have thought, uh, can we get a break here? It was that kind of weekend, a weekend where more still was asked of us. Uh, the actions that people have taken in BC uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, since uh, 
we uh, declared a public health emergency in March since we set up our emergency response in January have truly been extraordinary and they've had positive consequences. We've made surgical renewal possible. We made visitations again for our seniors and elders in long-term care and assisted living possible. We're making back to school possible, back to work possible. We're making our new more normal possible. Last week we learned that our healthcare sector is prepared for whatever COVID-19 might bring this winter. We're prepared with more testing and more contact tracing. We're prepared with a flu immunization effort this fall, the size of which none of us has ever seen. We're prepared with a primary community and hospital care system that's there for all patients. And that includes those with COVID-19 by having assigned COVID beds across 19 designated hospitals. We're prepared by recruiting 7,000 healthcare workers to provide additional support to our seniors and elders in long-term care homes and assisted living facilities. We're prepared by implementing increased in-community testing and timely access to primary and urgent hospital care through emergency ground and air ambulance transportation in rural, remote, and indigenous communities. We're prepared by reducing the chance for transmission in hospital through hospital at home. We're prepared with our supply of PPE that I've just discussed in our ongoing pursuit of more. And we've learned that our achievement in stopping the spread is closely linked to the success of these health sector preparations and the need for them. We're asking more of ourselves for the weeks and months ahead because we can do it and we must do it. Physical distancing stops the spread and saves lives. Washing our hands stops the spread and saves lives. Wearing a mask when asked to, required to, or when it's the right thing to do stops the spread and saves lives. Staying home when we're sick and letting our public health officials know, uh, uh, um, know uh, and contacting them when we're sick or we think we may be sick with COVID-19 stops the spread and saves lives. Letting stick to six be our constant guide to the maximum number of people we socialize with outside our household bubble stops the spread and saves lives. So let's remember this about COVID-19. Our health system is prepared and so are we. Our staying 100% all in has made it possible and will continue to make all the difference today, this week, this month, this fall, and this winter. We're prepared, we know we can do it, we know what we must do, and we know we can do it. 